Let us talk about vaccination and immunization. We know that our immunity can be active or passive. Active means when the pathogen enters into our body in the form of a live pathogen or it can enter into our body in the form of a vaccine. When we take uh, vaccines or when we get immunized, we inject that pathogen. Now this pathogen is injected in two forms. Either it is killed pathogen or it is weakened pathogen. So then our body starts preparing the antibodies and that is when we say that we have taken a vaccine or we are immunized against a particular disease. This is active immunity. Passive means when we are taking ready-made antibodies. Now these vaccines, they are classified into three categories. The first generation vaccines, then second generation vaccines and there is third generation vaccines. First generation vaccines are the orthodox method vaccines. That is the old traditional method which is like very common till date and that includes kill or weaken pathogen. That is the typical method of vaccination. And here there are many, like even polio uh, drops which we take. So there are two types of polio vaccines. One has a killed pathogen, one has a weakened pathogen. Now when we say it is a weak pathogen, it is also written as a live vaccine. But live vaccine does not mean that you have properly active pathogen. So the killed pathogen, we can take an example of killed one is BCG. For weakened, we can take seven, that is oral polio vaccine. And here we take SARC. This is also polio vaccine. So these are the killed and like uh, or weakened pathogen. Weakened is like very common. Against measles also we have weakened. Against cholera also we have the weakened one. So this is the orthodox method. The second generation vaccines are the ones which are obtained by RDNA technology. That is during biotechnology when we talk about recombinant DNA and using this recombinant DNA how we make the proteins. Actually, what exactly we need for antibody to be formed in our body? Suppose this is a pathogen and this pathogen has this protein. So this protein, it acts as an antigen and it triggers antibody formation in our body. Now there is a risk that we are trying to take the killed pathogen as vaccine. And suppose for some reason... It doesn't happen but suppose for some reason if this pathogen doesn't die it remains active and we take this assuming that it is killed or weakened and because it is a live active a pathogen it causes the disease in our body so what is required we require only this protein and any protein can be synthesized by our DNA technology so by this second generation vaccine, we mean that the vaccines which are produced by our DNA technology. So here it includes only the antigenic protein. So these are only antigenic proteins. It, is, it does not contain the complete pathogen. So we are trying to avoid the risk. Right now, hepatitis... B vaccine and cholera vaccines. These are the two vaccines which we have developed by this technique, our DNA technology. So these are the two second generation vaccines that we have right now. Third generation vaccines means these are going to be synthetic vaccines. 
Synthetic vaccines means these are going to be some molecules which are going to be analogs. Analogs means it is going to be analog of that antigenic protein. Analog of antigenic protein. So it is going to be something else, not a protein definitely, but it's going to function like protein. And because it is some other chemical, it can be synthesized in a factory. Right now, we do not have any third generation vaccine available for us. The research is going on and the scientists are working on this. So as soon as we get synthetic vaccines, we would not need any living organism for that. These vaccines will be produced in the factories and we will use them. Now let us write down some scientists, their names and the vaccines which they developed. So first in this category is Edward Jenner. And many times one scientist discovered and you know uh, came up with those vaccines or rather developed those vaccines. Smallpox, cholera, and tetanus. Smallpox, cholera, and tetanus. So these are the three vaccines developed by Edward Jenner. Then is pasture. Again, pasture developed vaccines against rabies. That is uh, the disease which is caused by or spreads by the rabid animals. Then is anthrax. And some for animals also. Like animals also need to be immunized. So some vaccines for animals were also developed by pasture. Then SARC. This is the uh, name of the scientist and the vaccine was against polio. So SARC contains kill pathogen of polio or polio virus. So this is kill and the other one is seven which is given as oral polio vaccine and it contains the weakened pathogen. Weakened polio virus. So one has killed pathogen, the other has the weakened one. Then Enders developed vaccine against measles. These are some important names, some vaccines. BCG, we already know it is against uh, TB. DPT is also vaccine, which is DPT is known as triple antigen. Diphtheria produces, produces is also known as whooping cough and tetanus. So this vaccine is given against three diseases. BCG is bacillus calmatic urine. This is against TB. Then there are other vaccines also which are available and the main ones are these. And hepatitis B vaccine we know is a second generation vaccine. Cholera vaccine is this also, like uh, second generation also and first generation also. So there are various uh, vaccines which are available nowadays against most of the diseases and the diseases for which we don't have the vaccines we are working on it now you have the vaccine against uh, covid that is coronavirus also and you know the names which are given to that those and here we have written the names of the scientists and now the names are of the companies who have developed so there are so many vaccines which are available for uh, this uh, coronavirus. 